curious people. Today, we're going to take a look at one important question. Ancient humans had sex with other hominids, or Neanderthals had sex with humans? I want to thank you for continuing to watch this channel. And if you like what we do here, please subscribe, it's a huge help for us. Scientists have collected evidence for years that modern humans interbred with our rich brown Neanderthal ancestors in Eurasia. But in Africa, where the Homo sapiens species is said to have emerged, a lack of genetic evidence has left researchers scratching their heads about exactly how we came to beat out not only the Neanderthals or Homo neanderthalus, but also the other archaic species like Homo erectus and Homo habilis. A new paper published by Michael Hammer from the University of Arizona provides new evidence that Homo sapiens not only interbred with Neanderthals in Eurasia, they also did it with several species of our ancestors across the African continent. And they did it often. What we know about the history of our species has long been determined by what we can learn from our ancestors' remains. In 2006, researchers deduced that humans and Neanderthals had interbred at some point based on the shapes of skulls found in caves or buried under thousands of years worth of soil. Then, a groundbreaking paper published in 2010 provided genetic proof that Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa and into the Neanderthal-occupied Eurasian continent, where they met and mated with the more primitive men. Scientists discovered this while comparing samples of Neanderthal DNA with that of modern human DNA. The leaky replacement hypothesis provides further evidence of the closeness of Neanderthals to modern humans. Not only did the two interbreed, the resulting hybrid offspring were functional enough to be integrated into human society. Some of these hybrids survived to have kids of their own, who in turn had kids, and so on to the present day. Even now, at least 30,000 years after the fact, the signal is discernible, all non-Africans, from the New Guineans to the French to the Han Chinese, carry somewhere between 1 and 4 percent Neanderthal DNA. Michael Hammer says that the interbreeding didn't stop with Neanderthals, but because of environmental conditions, we haven't been able to do the same genetic research with our African ancestors. Lacking actual DNA, Michael Hammer and his team did what any modern scientist would do, they wrote a computer program. Using modern human DNA, they were able to simulate history and sort of reverse engineer human DNA. In doing so, they found evidence that Homo sapiens not only had sex with Neanderthals, they also interbred with Homo erectus, the upright walking man, Homo habilis, the tool using man, and possibly others. Michael Hammer says that despite earlier skepticism about interbreeding between human species, and despite the belief that humans were an exception to certain laws of evolution, our DNA shows otherwise. One big question remains. Why did modern man survive as the archaic species died off? Well, while we still don't know the answer, genetic research like Michael Hammer, that tracks the migration of Homo sapiens around the globe provides some clues. In fact, it seems like what makes modern man different has a lot to do with traveling to new places and conquering them. From the archaeological record, it's inferred that Neanderthals evolved in Europe or Western Asia and spread out from there, stopping when they reached water or some other significant obstacle. During the Ice Ages, sea levels were a lot lower than they are now, so there was no English Channel to cross. This is one of the most basic ways modern humans differ from Neanderthals, and also one of the most intriguing. By about 45,000 years ago, modern humans had already reached Australia, a journey that, even mid-Ice Age, meant crossing open water. Archaic humans like Homo erectus spread like many other mammals in the Old World. They never came to Madagascar, never to Australia. Neither did Neanderthals. It's only fully modern humans who start this thing of venturing out on the ocean, where you don't see land. Part of that is technology, of course, you have to have ships to do it. But there is also some madness there. How many people must have sailed out and vanished on the Pacific before you found Easter Island? I mean, it's ridiculous. And why do you do that? Is it for the glory? For immortality? For curiosity? And now we go to Mars. We never stop. This is the end. Now if you want to get others to find out what we are doing here, I'll tell you very honestly, a share will not only help, but will also be greatly appreciated.
If you want to be sure that you don't miss anything, of course, only if I convinced you that it's worth it, it would help me to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you.